Today it's time to look at the newest Neptunia game, which also happens to be the newest Sender and Kagura game. Yes, it's actually a crossover between two franchises that have a lot of overlap when it comes to fans. There's been moments of crossover-esque activities like, you know, when Neptune was a playable character in Peach Beach Splash for example, but of course, fans demand more. And now we've got more in the form of Neptunia Senran Kagura Ninja Wars for the PlayStation 4. I asked Idea Factory if they'd be willing to send a copy over and they agreed. In fact, they even sent me the limited edition, which we'll take a look at later in the video. What we should probably start with is the basic summary of the game. It's an action hack and slash game that's more aligned to Senran Kagura than Neptunia in the gameplay department, while providing a story that is more along the lines of a Neptunia game. This game is made by Tamsoft, who've not only made all the 3D mainline Senran Kagura games, but also spin-offs for the Neptunia series. Neptunia U, Blonde vs. Zombies, and Cyber Dimension Neptunia 4 Goddesses Online. They're all spin-offs that feature real-time gameplay, so if you've played any of those games, you may spot some similarities. And also, yeah, Tamsoft did make Producing Perfection, but that kind of doesn't count since that's a completely different thing. The plot for the game is all original, so it doesn't follow the continuity of any of the Nep or Senran Kagura games. There's two large nations that fight for control of Game Ninja... or geez, uh, Game Ninja's Tree. There we go. Yeah, Game Industry and Ninja together is uh, an interesting word. The first nation is Heartland, which is home to Ninjas of the Kompa style, that's the Nep crew. And Marvland, which is home to Honeypa style ninjas, which consists of the Senran Kagura girls. As the game begins, the battle between the Nep and Senran Kagura girls gets interrupted by the invasion of Steam Legion. Robotic ninjas attack and each faction is forced to retreat back home. Histoire, the daimyo of Heartland, decides to offer Marvland an alliance in order to protect themselves from Steam Legion. While this offer gets rejected at first, another attack from Steam Legion makes them reconsider their decision there and uh, both sides form an alliance to defeat a common enemy. Steam Legion is a mysterious entity run by someone with the strange name of Yo Gamer and Tetsuko. Soon you'll gain a handful of allies, Yuki, a cat girl ninja from another country called Virtue Nation, which is located to the south of Heartland, Princess Aru, who's the princess of Virtue Nation, and Go the Crow, who Neptune calls Jet, a ninja suffering from amnesia who appears strong and silent at first, but turns out to be or rather to have a bit of a strange and quirky personality. The playable characters are the four goddesses of the Neptunia games, the four leaders of the Senran Kagura games, as well as Yuki and Go. So no little sisters, Kampa and IF are relegated to being non-playable story characters, and none of the other Senran Kagura girls seem to be present. I do think that's a shame, but I guess the thing is that there's just so many characters that it would have been a bit of a problem to integrate them all into the story somehow. But still, if you just had a couple more, I think that'd be a nice thing. Also, remember that one video a few months ago that showed Yuki from behind? And I thought those things were bells or something? Or some sort of accessory? Nope, those are really her boobs, so yeah, that's pretty funny. I do quite like the new characters. They're fun and interesting. So despite the lack of some of the characters from, you know, the Senran Kagura and Neptunia franchise, at least the new characters are fun. I've noticed some interesting things with some of the regular characters though. For example, with Neptune, her silly and dorky side comes out much more often when in HDD mode, compared to how things would be in a normal Neptunia game. There's one point in the story where she randomly gives Jet her nickname, and then also proclaims that she's an expert in, uh, or an expert on amnesia. It's a bit unexpected because you'd think she'd say that sort of thing in her regular mode, but I guess it also reinforces the fact that this set of characters are not the same ones we see in the mainline games. I also noticed that characters aren't really explained or introduced well. They assume you already have experience with both franchises, so therefore character quirks are usually not explained. But I guess that's understandable. But if you only know one franchise and not the other, then things might be a little bit weird, and you know, you might not quite understand certain things. The game world isn't well explained either, actually. So okay, it's like a merge between game industry and the Senran Kagura universe. The Heartland and Marvland nations are fighting each other for a long time for some reason. That's it, basically. They act all chummy and friendly with each other quite early on, and their nation's conflict kind of gets glossed over, like it's not that important. The story has a slightly too light-hearted feel. 
I think that does both franchises a bit of a disservice there as they both have serious moments and themes, normally. There's a point where Histoire does mention the fact that the conflict between the two nations isn't really serious when talking to the baddies, but still I feel like that could have been approached maybe in a different way. Let's talk gameplay specifics. This is a Tamsoft game and it certainly feels like one. It's more like a Sendron Kagura game, though it doesn't share a lot of its mechanics. While it's a real-time experience, there are some elements brought in to reference the turn-based gameplay of Neptunia. The square button is how you attack. The triangle is for ranged attacks and you can choose between just a normal one or one that causes status ailments. They run out of charge so you can't just spam ranged attacks over and over. X is for jump and circle is how you block. Time it perfectly and you don't receive any damage. L2 locks onto an enemy and you can use the left and right directional buttons to cycle through enemies. It's a bit weird to cycle through enemies like that though because you can't run and change your target without having to do some acrobatics with your left hand. I'd prefer if the right analog stick did that instead. I mean the camera is already focused on the target so why not use the camera controls to switch between targets, right? That would make sense. L1 is how you bring up the special attack screen. This is, I think, where the game is quite clever when it comes to bringing in some turn-based elements. While the game doesn't come or doesn't uh, become turn-based, time does slow down when you press L1, and that gives you time to think about what you want to do. Stamina is used up with these attacks, and you can monitor the amount you have with the sectioned blue bar just by the health bar. Attacks use up one or more stamina bars depending on what they are and they can have effects like, you know, they give you a boost in attack, for example, if you string them together. There's a timer that tells you how much time you got to preserve your combo. Stamina regenerates really quickly with just a few regular attacks, so you can get to use special attacks a lot if you like playing that way. A lot of the early footage shows me targeting and untargeting opponents after doing special attacks because I kept mixing up the L1 and L2 buttons for some reason. Ideally, what you want to do is keep holding the L1 button because the special attack selection menu goes away and reappears automatically during special attacks, so you don't really need to let go of it. Continuously doing special attacks works to an extent. Once enemies become more dispersed, then your attacks won't always reach an enemy, so make sure you're not wasting your attacks there. One important aspect of the battle is that you switch between characters. There's uh, two that you can switch between in a fight. You get to decide which character is the leader and the partner in the status menu. It doesn't really matter either way, you know, which one's the leader or not, but I guess the leader always starts out first in a dungeon, so there's that. The down button switches between characters and the inactive member regains health. If you switch characters while attacking, the character coming into the fight will do an attack, which is useful to know. It's also kind of fun to just uh, switch characters out as you're attacking normally, I guess. It also fills both of their stamina bars quickly. There are differences between the characters. Each one has a different rhythm, I guess, and also attack speed. Neptune is a good down the middle character. In contrast, Noir is noticeably quicker, whereas uh, Vert is an example of a slower but more powerful attacker. It's fun to see how different they all feel to fight with. And I like rotating through them for my own entertainment as I play through the story. You have a home base where you can do the usual admin stuff, like change weapons, equipment, outfits, and buy items. As you play through the story, new locations unlock on the map, and the way it's all presented is quite Neptunia-like. Once you're in the dungeon, it feels a bit more like Sendron Kagra, with its traditional Japanese levels and how the paths are designed. I guess it also looks a bit like Four Goddesses Online, since Tamsoft made that game too. Usually how things go is that you select a dungeon, and go to the next event marker, which is represented by an exclamation point. Sometimes there are fights that block off your escape routes or paths until all enemies are defeated in that region or section. And, you know, that's how it is in Sendron Kagura, too. Before you face a boss or a stronger opponent, you'll get the opportunity to activate a checkpoint where the game is not only saved, but you also get to change around a limited amount of things regarding your party, though the party members will remain fixed. If you die in a fight, you'll just respawn here at the checkpoint. And then there's some instances where there's more than one checkpoint too. There's side quests available at the shrine, but instead of going to the dungeons yourself and the menu, which is what you, you know, what you're probably used to do in the NEP game, picking a quest will automatically start the mission. 
There's various requirements, which can be killing a certain amount of specific monsters, gathering items within a time limit, or what have you. Of course, you get compensated for your efforts. There seems to be some sort of XP sharing system. I'm not really exactly sure how it works, but most characters stay within a level of each other. I like that because I sometimes stick with a pair of characters for a while before switching things up. And I don't have to worry about characters being way behind. You know, like how it can be in Disgaea, for example. In terms of difficulty, I think Ninja Wars starts out pretty easy. Enemies do become stronger several hours in. This is most noticeable with bosses, though there was a point when my party couldn't survive more than a few hits in a new dungeon. Usually that's solved a number of different ways. Of course you can go back and grind an older dungeon to level up. You can swap out equipment and stock up on items that heal, replenish stamina, etc. Over time, you'll also learn new special attacks, which can, uh, which you can switch out the old ones for. They usually use more stamina though, so keep that in mind. Spirit gems are also a thing. It's a bit like an augmentation slash skill tree mechanic. Gems of different kinds exist. Some give you extra health or stamina, for example, while others get a bit more specific, like they'll give you extra defense as your health decreases. I don't obsess over it too much and just equip with, you know, or just equip whatever sounds good to me. And usually that ends up giving you a noticeable boost in battle. There's a sort of fan service minigame that you can play back at base. I say sort of because it doesn't really deliver in that department. It's called Peaches and Cream Meditation. Basically, you pick any character you want, have them balance on a peach using the motion controls of the PS4 and 5 controllers. Occasionally, you'll have to lean at an extreme angle. Once the time is up and you haven't fallen, then you'll get a little buff. It's not, you know, something super amazing. And you can tell that this was supposed to be the fan service minigame, but there really isn't that much fan service. You'd expect something with the water, like with Peach Beat Splash. But no, there's uh, none of that see-through technology. I guess the outfits are kind of fan servicey, though I think that's still quite tame for both franchises. So yeah, I guess that's a bit of a missed opportunity. Let's talk about graphics. What you've seen so far is PlayStation 5 footage. It runs at a constant 60 FPS. And there's absolutely nothing to complain about in terms of performance. On the PS4, the game runs just as good with no performance drops that I've noticed. I did some side quests in various dungeons and nothing slowed down during special attacks or when the screen got busy. Not bad considering my PS4 is just a base model system that I bought at launch. But in order for that performance, it does look like visuals have suffered a little bit. The environments aren't super detailed, a lot of the foliage is a bit blocky, and shading isn't too complex. Four Goddesses Online looked quite a bit better in the shading department, for example, but then again, it was also really buggy, and it didn't run that well, so there's that. The worst bit is the ground texture. The lack of anisotropic filtering makes the ground look very blurry, not just in the distance, but quite up close, so that doesn't look great. It's not quite Nintendo Switch spec, but it kind of reminds me of that a little bit. Playing Ninja Wars on a PS5 does give you one noticeable advantage, while texture quality and performance stay the same, resolution is better on the PS5. I took a few screenshots to highlight this clearly if you're watching on a phone or maybe on a screen that's, you know, 1080p or lower. Here's a screenshot of the title card which shows you how much less of a staircase effect you get on the PS5. This applies to the rest of the menus and thankfully also in actual 3D gameplay. You can see that the text is smoother on the PS5. There's none of those jagged edges. And the same thing can be seen on the various edges of the terrain, especially in the distance where things become slightly soft and out of focus to emulate distance. Another place you can spot that improvement are on the girls' hair, since there's a stark contrast between the black outline and the hair color. So yeah, in the end, it's just resolution being the difference here between the PS4 and PS5 game. Now, let's talk cutscenes. While regular NEP games use some sort of live 2D technology to animate mouth movements that mimic the sounds coming out of the character's mouths, but here they decided to use an animation loop that plays the same speed no matter what's being said. It doesn't match with anything, and just look how awful that animation is. Compare your nozio, so, Moishira said, Agri. Samina, Yaruayo. 
おいアスカパープルハートの相手はするなどうも調子が狂うんだよ It's really bad and sometimes the animation plays for a bit longer than it should Tamsoft has done this with 3D models in Senran Kagura forever now but for some reason here in 2D it's super bad looking They all go nom 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 ba 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 It's like jeez Anyway let's move on to the other highlight of the cutscenes where Yuki falls into some water. Maybe they're limited with what they can do, but if they can't animate that in a more interesting way, please at, le at least, you know, put in a, like an illustration instead, like a visual novel. That just looks really awful. In terms of sound and music, it's all very Senran Kagura like. You've got the traditional Japanese music that plays for the most part. And in terms of sounds, it again feels all very Senran Kagura like as you go through the menus and uh, also battle enemies. Nothing to complain about here since it all seems to fit the theme. You may have noticed that Japanese is the only voiceover language you can choose. There is a reason for that. Neptunia games have always been dubbed and compared to many other Japanese media, the reception has generally been better than average, but Senran Kagura games have never been dubbed. They always use Japanese voices with subtitles. So it makes sense that Ninja Wars can't have an English dub. But what about the Senran Kagura anime, you may ask? It's true that it does have an English dub, but the dubbing of the anime is handled by a different company. You can actually see that with the Neptunia anime as well. Many major characters are voiced by different people there. IF, Ray Wright, Rarichu slash Pirachu, and Pishi are some examples. So yeah, it's not a surprise that there's no English dub. In fact, I predicted that this would happen when the game was first announced and it turned out to be true. Now we need to address some crossover related things. The story is Neptunia like with how it pro sorry how it progresses and especially how the villains are like Steamax for example and it's like you know it's such a Senran Kagura way to deal with those uh, enemies because they have a lot of enemies that are like at first possibly perhaps stereotypically stern but then turn out to be silly, so yeah. But the gameplay is more along the lines of how a Senran Kagura game is, with a few tweaks to reference turn-based things from the Tunia. But one huge aspect that is missing, as you may have guessed, is any fan service, basically. One can cite Sony's policies putting a damper on this, but if you look at what games have been released since Sony's personality change, I'd still argue that Ninja Wars is actually quite conservative. For example, there's no clothing damage. Nep-U had that function, and you could equip characters in torn outfits in Blonde vs. Zombies. So, you know, this is not a new thing for Neptunia games. Plus, Senran Kagura Burst Renewal, which came out in 2019, had clothing damage too, and that was already well into Sony's new policy era. In other words, they could have put clothing damage in no problem, because that's not something Sony prohibits. Another thing I really wanted to see was different outfits. At most, there's only two different outfits you can choose from in Ninja Wars, which is really disappointing, especially when you consider that all the Nep girls get is a recolor of their, you know, of their uh, outfits there. I would have loved to be able to throw all those Senran Kagura clothes onto the Nep girls and also the other way around. Wouldn't it be cool if we could put HED outfits on the Senran Kagura girls? Even the camera during gameplay is annoyingly prudish. The camera can't be positioned as high or low as you want, and even if you aren't trying to look up a girl's skirt, the camera just ends up being annoyingly restrictive sometimes in regular gameplay. Seriously, who programmed the camera? A nun? The bath scenes are a bit disappointing too. There's a couple of times in the story where characters take a bath, but all we get is a lazy illustration, nothing like you'd get in the other T-rated Neptunia games. And then there's the Peach minigame, which I already mentioned. It's barely fan service, if at all. This is one of those things where people who are actively disliking fan service will still complain about it being distracting and off putting, while actual fan service fans won't even consider this fan service. So, in the end, it pleases no one and it's useless. So, basically, it's like this Neptunia, Senran Kagura, and Ninja Wars includes things that make the Neptunia series unique, while Senran Kagura only contributes partially by leaving out one of its biggest attributes which is clever fan service, fan service that isn't lazy, and it also makes you laugh due to the great lengths they go to to achieve it. That's what Kenichiro Takaki is great at, but since he's no longer involved in the series, 
I guess that's something we may never get again in a Senran Kagura game, and uh, it's certainly missing here. Let's take a look at the limited edition now. This is quite interesting. I'm again not a fan of how Idea Factory has seemingly stopped trying to hold all the items inside a box. The LE box doesn't hold the game or the wall scroll. The wall scroll is not that big either, so it wouldn't be a stretch to fit it in. In fact, they've done it before. With that out of the way, let's take a look at what we have. The game looks quite regular like this, of course. This is just how you get it if you buy it off the shelf. I think the white background behind Neptune and Asuka is a bit plain. There is a pattern there if you look closely, but if they made the background, let's say, like a goldish color, and then made that pattern more pronounced, then that would have been visually much more interesting, while still retaining the ability to easily differentiate between everything on the cover. The back is decently well done, with screenshots being big enough, considering all the BS that needs to happen on the bottom portion. The inside has the disc, and a seemingly identical cover page. But upon closer inspection, you may notice that the regular cover obscures Nep's cleavage, while the reverse has Nep's actual outfit we can see in the game. It's such a small change that it feels a bit weird that they cared so much about it that they changed it. The LE box is quite unique for the most part, and I think it's quite cool. I like the front and back images. The front has the Nep girls and the back has the Sunrun Kagura girls. I like the different background colors as well. It's a nice way to change the feel of the images while still keeping the jumping through the air at night theme. The box design is inspired by Maquille, which is black lacquer and gold leaf, you know, that sort of art. The unfortunate thing is that the gold leaf is represented by this sandy and dirty looking texture. If they kept it just yellow, it would have looked infinitely better. The thing I noticed too was that the images aren't exactly on the center of the box. You can see the edge of the image is a different distance to almost every side. Not super noticeable far away but I keep seeing it now that I know about it. The LE is quite close to what the Japanese get, but the wall scroll is different here in the West. It's made to look like a woodblock print, while the Japanese version has an illustration of Nep and Noir in kimonos. Maybe they didn't include it here because it looks like they're smoking something, though I think the bubbles are there to show that they aren't. Whatever the reason, we didn't get it. I do still like what we got though. Especially how the doggoos are more realistic looking canines there. I think that's pretty cool. Unfortunately, the print quality is a tad blurry up close, but it's not really a problem at a realistic viewing distance of a meter or more. The LE box is a bit hard to open. Someone actually warned me about this box design being hard to open because, uh, yeah, it's just an elongated triangular notch, but it does look kind of classy, though not exactly amazing function wise i guess once we open it up do you see this black like splotchy bit here for some reason someone at the factory i'm guessing went in and painted the whole like all the white edges with a marker but left behind a mess i have no idea why someone would do this they should have just left it the way it is thankfully it's only on the inside but still it's actually awful on the inside other than that mess we have an Idea Factory trading card. There was a different one wrapped together with the game case too. The cards show the Nep and Senran Kagura girls. The steel game case looks quite nice. There's a nice metallic texture in the background, which I'm always glad to see integrated into the design. The Nep girls are on the front again with the Senran Kagura girls on the back. I like the stylized art inside where it looks like Nep and Asuka are rushing at each other. The inside holds a disc as well as a manual, which doesn't exist. I guess the molds for the steel game cases are the same no matter what game. The soundtrack consists of one disc. The music isn't as brick-walled as I expected. The inclusion of many traditional instruments probably have resulted in a mix that isn't too hot, but there's a lot of instances where the music is still getting squashed. The art book is hardcover and has a matte finish. It's the usual formula of character profiles, a bit of you know concept work, and then a few illustrations. I'd like to see something a bit more different here since it's almost always the same sort of stuff. Overall, the LE looks quite unique for a Neptunia limited edition because it doesn't feature any sci-fi visuals. It doesn't really look like any Senran Kagura LE, which makes sense since this is an Idea Factory release. I think the items look nice when you display them like this on a shelf. I like the design ideas, the illustration quality is high, and the wall scroll is a cool, unique addition. 
The only thing is uh, that, yeah, the dirty looking fake gold leaf isn't that nice. And then there's the quality issue with the images not being on center on the, you know, on the box there. Not to mention that guy who went nuts with the marker on the inside. So yeah, that's Neptune, Senran Kagura, Ninja Wars for the PS4. Overall, I liked playing the game. I think the core gameplay is quite good. And uh, it's nice that it's smooth without any weird bugs or performance issues. I just wish they didn't go so tame with the fan service stuff. It's a large part of the Senran Kagura experience. And even given, you know, the recent games, there's a lot of things they could have done even within Sony's restrictions. If they also had a few more playable characters, that would have been, yeah, I think that would have elevated the game from being decently fun to being really quite good. So that's that. Let me know what you think. Just so you know, there's a second channel as well where I post some videos to, well, I mean, I guess that's the point of a second channel, right? For example, the LE unboxing, I posted there first because... That's something I can usually quickly put out. So, you know, that's just like a little bit of a bonus thing. And then there's other miscellaneous videos that can be found there too. You know, things that I find interesting, topics that I find interesting, or just, you know, gameplay things that I find funny or amusing. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you again in the next video.